Hey everybody, I've got something pretty awesome to show you today. Um, but before I get into what it is, why I have it, um, I wanted to talk a little bit about my video game goals for 2016. The number one goal I have for 2016 is to stop buying every new video game I want to play the day it comes out. Um, you know, this is something that this culture of the backlog, the perpetual backlog, that we uh, gamers are so susceptible to, um, I hate to say it, but it's just a side effect of us growing up with video games PR, you know, from back in the day when Nintendo Power was um, basically selling us video games in a fun, uh, colorful package, uh, you know, we didn't think of it as being sold to back then, we thought of it as, uh, oh my god, now I can see what the new games are, and this is what I can dream about for months and months and months, but, you know, it's it's so ingrained in who we are as gamers that we don't even realize that we're just being marketed to. So uh, I, I know that sounds cynical, I love video games, but that's just, um, you know, it's something that I've been thinking about the older I get. You know, I'm still playing The Witcher 3, I'm still playing Fallout 4, um, I haven't even opened Metal Gear Solid 5, I haven't even touched Xenoblade Chronicles X because I'm still playing Xenoblade Chronicles 3D which came out last February. I mean, I've put 65 hours into that game and I'm still apparently not even close to being done. So why would I want to keep spending so much money on brand new games when I have so many basically brand new games still to play? Um, so that's my biggest goal, my gaming goal for 2016, with very few exceptions. Uh, what I'd rather be spending that money on is, is growing my Super Nintendo collection. Um, one of my biggest gaming goals um, 2016, 2017, and beyond is to collect every single North American Super Nintendo release, um, which is which is sort of a long-term goal. I think it's going to take another five to ten years to get everything, but um, you know, that that's that's my big goal. Uh, I'd like to be able to have money to spend on this kind of stuff, and um, and keeping up with new releases just uh, isn't isn't going to make that possible. Um, Another big goal for 2016, though, besides just collecting more Super Nintendo games, is to actually play them and try and finish them. And that's kind of a tall order because I have over 140 Super Nintendo games now. And um, that might seem like a lot to some of you. It's only a really small portion of the total catalog for the system. But I have a lot of games here that I can play and, and finish. And a lot of them I've just never even touched. Um, so I had to come up with a plan for how to tackle that, and what I decided to do was to hit hard and go with the biggest ones first, which is the, all the amazing role-playing games on the Super Nintendo. You know, I've played Final Fantasy 3 or 6, whatever you want to call it, more times than I can count. Uh, I've played Super Mario RPG a couple times, I've played Chrono Trigger through to completion a few times, but there are so many other games I've never played. Uh, great RPGs on the system I've never played. Um, or some lesser known RPGs I've never finished. Um, I've got a complete box copy of, of Shadowrun, which um, I loved as a kid. Uh, it, it intrigued me, but um, it was sort of inscrutable for me back then, so that's one I want to finish. But um, I decided to really focus and try and find a series of games that I hadn't played and just you know go from game to game within a series. And what I settled on was um, the Soul Blazer series. Almost three years ago now, I got this really nice condition copy of the game for five bucks with this um, case and with the manual. And that's great because that's a $120 game now, but um, you know, I played it a little bit as a kid, never finished it. So that was the first game I beat this year. It only took about a week, it wasn't very long. Actually, um, really it probably took three or four days max to beat. Um, the next game in the series was Illusion of Gaia, which I didn't have, um, but you know, I bought it. It wasn't expensive, it was like 18 bucks. Certainly more than I paid for Soul Blazer, but, you know, reasonable. Um, and I just finished that this week as well. Um, they're both pretty good games. I wouldn't say either of them is a true classic like um, Chrono Trigger or like Link to the Past. These are more action RPGs like, like Zelda, but um, they certainly have a lot going for them. But there's a third game in the series which was never released in the United States, and that's uh, called Terra Enigma. Terra Enigma despite not being a US released game, is actually on my short list of Super Nintendo games to own and to play. And uh, the reason for that is I've heard so many people say it's one of the best action RPGs on the system. And um, 
and I should be playing it, no matter how I go about doing that. So, uh, what I decided to do for Terra Enigma was, uh, rather than getting a European copy, because the game was released in Europe, as it was released in Japan, uh, rather than getting a European copy with the official English translation, uh, I decided to get a reproduction cartridge that was made for United States or North American or American Super Nintendo systems. And the reason I decided to do that is because uh, PAL games, European games, they are they run at 50 hertz, which is uh, which is a different TV standard than what we have here in the States and in Japan. Our TV standard is called NTSC. That's 60 hertz. Um, what does that mean? It means PAL games run slower than our games. So uh, I did not want a game that was slower than it was supposed to be. And as this game was released in Japan first, the official PAL release is actually an inferior game. Um, so again, I decided to go with a reproduction cartridge. Now, uh, what is a reproduction cartridge? It's um, somebody typically, um, who, somebody who's not authorized to do so, uh, modifies an existing game's cartridge and, and, and ROM board to play, to play a game that, um, you know, either wasn't released in, in a certain territory, like Final Fantasy V, which was never released here, uh, but we have a fan translation, so people have put the fan translation on, uh, on a North American ROM board and stuck it in a, in a North American cartridge, and so now we have Final Fantasy V to play on the Super Nintendo. Um, other people use reproduction cartridges to make bootlegs of games that have been released here, but that a lot of people don't want to spend the money uh, to play. Wild Guns is a great example. This is a game that goes for between $200 and $300 now, because um, that's how the Super Nintendo collecting market is. It's just crazy, but, um, you know, some people will take advantage of the fact that people don't want to pay what this is worth. So they'll make a bootleg reproduction cartridge, uh, make a fake label, slap it on there, sell the game for 80 bucks, um, or 50 bucks, or 100 bucks, depending on, um, depending on the market at the time, and people will pay it. Now, I don't think that they should. I think that reproduction cartridges uh, have a place, and that is for things like fan translations, and games that weren't released here, or games that were never released, but ROMs of them um, made it onto the internet in the years since the Super Nintendo, you know, came out. But, uh, you know, that's another story. But, you know, I know why people don't like reproduction cartridges. I get it. Uh, it, it, it dirties the water of the collecting market, and, uh, and it, in many cases it devalues your existing games, or that's the perception anyway. But, you know, I have to say, my all-time favorite game is Mother 3. This game was never officially released in English. Uh, there's an amazing fan translation, which uh, it might as well be a professional translation for, for, for all I care. I've played through it so more times than I can count. Um, just a beautiful game. And, you know, this entire thing here, everything from the strategy guide to the big box to the small box, the manuals, the cartridge, everything here is custom made uh, unofficially by reproduction makers. I have a lot of valuable official games in my collection, but this reproduction cart is the crown jewel of my collection because I love the game so much. So, um, you know, if you're against reproduction cartridges on principle, try to remember that you are missing out on so many games that you might not otherwise be able to play. And if you don't want to, and if you don't want to give repro makers money because they are taking the free work that fan translators have done, which is question, questionable from a legal perspective to begin with, but if you don't want to give reproduction makers your money, and that's your prerogative, get a flash cart, play, play some games that way, emulate them, I guess, um, and in the case of bootleg games, if you can't afford them, get them on the virtual console. Um, I know certain games are on the virtual console, like Wild Guns, but um, anyway, um, so I'm sort of waffling here, but the reason I'm making this video is because today I did receive a reproduction cartridge of Terra Enigma in the mail. Um, it's from a new reproduction maker uh, called Fishy Face Games. Now, why did I go with Fishy Face Games? Um, with Terra Enigma and with a lot of reproductions, if you're trying to find a reproduction cartridge, because so many people know how to make them now, you know, you go on eBay, you go on uh, collector forums, and you see all these people selling reproductions, but if you don't have any experience with them, 
if you can't really see nice pictures of their product, um, they you know some people aren't friendly, they don't want to answer questions. You know you could pay fifty dollars for a game and get it, and you know um, when it arrives, uh, it's kind of n not very high quality product. Uh, a good example is this reproduction cartridge of Star Fox Two, which I bought years ago. Um, you know it, it's hand cut, and that's kind of ugly but you know I really like the label otherwise but the problem is that it fades over time because it's just basically printed up on printer paper and, and you know so I don't want something like that for my collection even though I know it's an unofficial item it doesn't count towards the, the, the final tally of games that I have but um you know if I'm gonna buy a reproduction game I, I want it to be high quality so I didn't want to go with eBay in this case there's just so many things out there the former king of reproduction makers, as some people would consider them, uh, Time Walk Games, is no longer in business, and uh, to get one of their games on eBay, you're paying $300 because their reputation is so high that um, that people are still selling sealed reproduction games, you know, years after Time Walk shut down. Um, but I randomly found Fishy Face games on Nintendo Age forums, uh, and uh, and from browsing their website and looking at their pictures on the forums, they seem to be making some really high quality stuff. Um, and, you know, I don't know the full details on this yet. I may never know. Um, maybe I can update you with my next video, but uh, I do think uh, that there is some affiliation between Fishy Face Games and another custom game company called Rose Colored Gaming. Um, Rose Colored Gaming makes highly custom cartridges uh, with lights and metallic paint and crazy display stands and fishy face games on the other hand makes you know less expensive but s still apparent uh, apparently from the pictures high quality retail presentation type reproductions so um, I haven't opened the box yet but the reproduction did come today of Terranigma um, I'm really excited to open it. I wanted to do it on camera for the first time so you can see my reaction as I'm as I'm uh, opening it and seeing the contents on the inside and the quality, etc. So um, without further ado, let's take a look uh, and see what the quality is on a Fishy Face Games Super Nintendo reproduction. Okay, so here we go. Here's the uh, box that it shipped in. And, um, you know, also up here I'm going to have probably the mintiest Super Nintendo complete in box game I've ever seen, which is this um, amazing copy of Super Metroid I've got. I have that here for comparison's sake, uh, just to see uh, how close to getting it right uh, Fishy Face Games uh, got with, uh, with Terra Enigma. So let's open it up here. Um, you probably don't need to see me opening this box, but... Uh, Well, let's see. At a glance, it looks really nice. Uh, the colors are slightly different than uh, than a, an official box, but you know, it looks, I gotta say, it looks gorgeous. Okay, so this art is from the European Manual for Terra Enigma. The logo here is actually a custom design by Fishy Face Games. Uh, over on an official release, you have the official Nintendo Seals quality, which denotes it as an officially licensed Nintendo product. This one has the Fishy Face Games logo, which I think uh, is, a, is a nice touch, uh, kind of funny, kind of cute. I think it fits. Um, it makes it obvious this is not an official game. Uh, for anybody who would be trying to sell this or pass it off as one, you would know it's not official. Uh, one thing that I do notice right away is that on the top edge of the box it says Squaresoft. Um, the same thing on the bottom edge, it says Squaresoft. So, it's funny, I had a bit of a conversation with uh, Fishy Face Games uh, online a, a couple days ago because another forum user at Nintendo Age had pointed out that from their pictures uh, for this box, which said Nintendo in this spot, uh, they thought it should say Enix because Enix was the developer uh, and publisher of, um, of Soul Blazer. Um, and I had emailed back and forth with Fishy Face Games and said, you know, I think that person's right. You should put the Enix logo on there, not the Nintendo logo. Uh, but then I started thinking about it, and we actually had a, had a conversation back and forth. Um, and uh, Illusion of Gaia was actually published by Nintendo. Uh, 
they, I think they saw what amounted to a very high quality game uh, in 1994 and uh, wanted to fill a hole in their publishing schedule. So they published Illusion of Gaia and I believe they also published Terranigma in Europe. Uh, but uh, so we decided that actually the box should remain, it should continue to say Nintendo on top. It's funny that this says Squaresoft because as you probably know now, Enix folded eventually merged with Square, who sometimes went by Squaresoft in the United States, and now the company is known as Square Enix. Well, this game would not say Squaresoft on it if it was released today, it would say Square Enix. But at the time that the 60 Hertz Terranigma mod was completed, there was such an entity called Squaresoft. So, uh, and that was in like 2004-ish. So um, I think that uh, Maybe some super purists might have a problem with this saying Squaresoft, but I think if we're talking about the game that was completed for, for NTSC 60 Hertz English players uh, in 2004, I, I think that if this game was released then, it would be appropriate for it to say Squaresoft. Uh, because Enix was no longer around at that point. Unless Nintendo published it, but let's not uh, split hairs because Nintendo, in fact, did not publish this game in the US. So. Let's turn it over. Um, the sides are cool looking, but I'm not going to spend too much time on those. Uh, so uh, you've got a nice kind of um, imitation of the four screens and, and flavor text on the left. Um, the uh, the recycling warnings, the the um, the warnings about official or unofficial products, cleaning your games. Um, cleaning your games? Did I make that up? Oh, the the consumer information precautions booklet warning, uh, and then the and then the uh, logo of who who actually produced this, which is Fishy Face Games on the right. Now, um, I should say that they're not actually trying to reproduce anything here. They're not trying to. They didn't. Um, they didn't come up with this layout on their own because this is actually the layout of the official European release. The only thing that's really different here is the logo, which they custom designed. And this information here, which says, This official Fishy Face Games seal is your assurance that Fishy Face Games has approved the quality of this product. Always look for this seal when buying Fishy Face Games products to ensure complete compatibility with your Super Nintendo Entertainment System. Uh, so this game will work on an official Super Nintendo. It will work on a, on a Retron 5 as well, which is actually how I play my Super Nintendo games now. But not every reproduction game will work on a Retron 5. Okay, so I think it's actually time to open this bad boy up, which... Uh, I've actually had this all day and I've been too busy to open it, so I've got to say I'm excited about this. Let's put Super Metroid aside for a second. Uh, I'm going to cut this carefully. This is your typical unboxing nonsense. Feel free to skip through. I just don't want to damage the box. Carefully, opening carefully, right down the seam. What's that you say? It's not an H seam? Uh-oh. Can you guys feel the excitement in the air? No? You've seen enough of these videos. You got the, you got the idea. Well, I've never done one before, so I'm excited. And I'm just going to slide this down the box, because when I put this in a box protector, I'm going to try to slide the plastic back on. Actually, you know what? Let's just leave the plastic on entirely. And I'm going to open it up from the side that I opened. I normally would open it from this side, but... Um, this is where it would seem the easiest to cut. So I'm gonna open this very carefully because I don't want to wrinkle the, the fold here. Okay, it is opened. So first impression I have, the first point I could make is that um, 
official original Super Nintendo boxes were actually gray on the inside. Who cares? I don't care. I'm not saying anything about the lack of quality of this product because it's white on the inside, but it's a difference. Just something to point out. So, here we go. Cartridge. Manual looks, uh, okay, it's taped. I was gonna say it looks like it's vacuum sealed. I hope not. I mean, it would just be one more thing I'd have to cut open. So this is what we have on the inside. We have the cartridge. Uh, the label is really nice. That's a really nice quality label. Let's see what it looks like outside of the bag. Really nice, nice stuff. Um, I would say it could almost pass for official, but it was actually put on here a little crookedly, so um, it actually overlaps with the, the ridge on the cartridge here. But uh, I'm not complaining. It's really, a really nice job um, from Fishy Face Games, and, and certainly better than the a lot of the hand-cut labels you see online. Uh, on um, you know eBay and 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 places like that where they cut the corners and it's just really obvious that it's that it's been cut by hand. Um, I mean I've tried to make my own labels for some of my uh, reproductions and I know how hard that can be. So uh, now, oops. Now setting it down in the light here, uh, I do see that it's. Uh, oh, I guess here's something that I should have pointed out. They have their own custom sticker on the back as well that says Fishy Face Games on it. Um, now what I was going to say is this is, uh, I can tell that it's um, a repurposed former cartridge and not, you know, a new mold or anything like that because the uh, the back half is slightly yellowing a different, or a different color of gray, I guess, uh, which happens frequently with Super Nintendo games. A lot of my games, even my really valuable ones, have this sort of purple hue, purple hued gray versus this yellow hued gray. Uh, there's a couple of tiny blemishes on it, um, but I can probably clean that off, no problem. Those may just be uh, stains from, from, from age as well. And then let's open the manual. And I'm just going to cut the tape here so I don't have to deal with any disgusting, sticky shit. Here's the manual, which is pretty nice, fairly high quality. It's not uh, it's not retail quality, um, but it was a re it is a pretty high quality print job, very high resolution. Uh, the paper is just not quite as um, uh, it's a little more matte than an official release would be. Um, but yeah, the text is really high resolution. Uh, the artwork, um, on, the artwork pops in some of these, and others it doesn't. But uh, that's just a, a side effect of the original image. Um, I think in a lot of ways this is probably just a reproduction of the official um, European manual. So, you know, if you were to buy one of these and you really didn't like this Fishy Face Games reproduction, which I think is is pretty great. Um, not perfect, but pretty great. Um, you could always try and find a manual, uh, but you'd pay a pretty penny for a manual for Terra Enigma. Um, I do see that uh, while it was guillotine cut, some of the number symbols on the pages have been cut off on the edges a little bit. But uh, overall, a really high quality piece of work. I haven't played this game, I've only listened to the soundtrack, so I don't know anything about these monsters. But I see that there's a monster called Bloody Mary, and she's got this wicked looking cackle on her face. 
Uh, so I'm looking forward to checking that out. So um, there you have it. There is the Fishy Face Games reproduction of Terra Enigma. Um, I'm happy with it. I think it's a really nice product, and um, I'm definitely going to be... You guys, my dog is dreaming right now, so you might be able to hear him whimpering. Can you hear that? My dog's behind my desk and he's whimpering right now. Um, let's just really quickly open up Super Metroid and I'll show you how this compares to the real thing. You probably won't be able to tell on my video camera, but, but maybe. Okay, so inside Super Metroid you had a little poster, which I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna bother opening. But, um, a Super Power Club poster, a precautions booklet, consumer information and precautions booklet, a pamphlet for the Super Metroid Player's Guide that was available with Nintendo Power subscriptions. The best ending to Super Metroid begins here, because the faster you beat it, the better your ending. And here's the uh, manual, um, which uh, which is just a little bit better quality than Terra Enigma. Um, Mine's got a slight rip on it, unfortunately, but um, maybe you can pick this up. The blacks are just a little bit deeper. Um, this looks more like um, something that was maybe as, I would say, kind of resembles a zine in quality, but um, yeah, still something really uh, nice quality and, uh, and good for, I would say it's really nice for collectors. You may disagree. I like it. And uh, yes, before anybody points it out, I know this is the wrong version of Super Metroid to go in this box. I plan on trading for a non-million seller version at some point, but um, this is what you get inside. <laughs> a real retail Super Nintendo game, and it actually reminds me that Terra Enigma did not have one of these, but you know, I have so many of these things, I could just stick it on here and who cares? So let's do that. Let's put a dust cap on this bad boy. Alright, so, what do you think? Official on top, unofficial on bottom. I can tell the difference in person. Maybe you can't on the camera. But you know what? Who cares? It's a really high quality product. And I'm super happy to have this. Um, thank you Fishy Face Games uh, for your work getting a uh, high quality reproduction together for somebody who doesn't want to pay uh, the Time Walk Games is Dead tax and for somebody who doesn't want to risk a potentially lower quality offering on eBay. Um, thanks for watching.